Liberal Viewer presents. So at the end of last month, I noticed the supposedly straight news program America's Newsroom on Fox News was giving a lot of airtime to this guy, Eric Stanley, senior legal counsel for James Dobson's conservative Christian rights group Alliance Defending Freedom, and also director of something called the Pulpit Initiative that encourages religious leaders to disobey the laws for all 501c3 nonprofit groups that prohibit them from intervening in elections and prevents pastors and tax-exempt churches from endorsing political candidates from the pulpit. But even though Eric Stanley got all this airtime on Fox News, the coverage never mentioned his campaign to disobey and challenge the law against tax-exempt churches intervening in elections and instead reframed it as an IRS attack on churches, as you can see just in the teaser for the story here. We believe that pastors have a constitutional right to speak freely from the pulpit. The IRS should not be the pulpit police. Now, what's going on here? Is the tax man about to go after America's churches? Why, the IRS may soon put houses of worship under the microscope. Is that true? We'll talk about it. Now, not only did Fox News reframe this conservative Christian campaign to disobey and challenge the law against tax-exempt churches intervening in elections as an IRS attack, Fox News even specifically linked this story to the controversy Fox News has been hyping about the IRS investigating the political activity of social welfare groups, along with more airtime for Eric Stanley, of course, in the final teaser for the story here. Is the IRS getting ready to go after some of America's churches? Now, why would that be? In light of the recent scandal where the IRS was found to be targeting conservative groups, the IRS should not be waging a secret battle against pastors and churches. <laughs> now, it was not only the conservative Christian lawyer Eric Stanley linking this so-called secret battle against pastors and churches to the so-called scandal Fox News has already been hyping about the IRS targeting conservative groups because when supposedly straight news anchor Martha McCallum introduced the actual story, she made sure to use that same word, targeting, to describe the possibility that the IRS would just enforce the law against tax-exempt churches intervening in elections, and she added in an even more incendiary item about a so-called secret deal between the IRS and atheists to go after churches, as you can see in that introduction here. IRS back in the news, they're reaching a so-called secret agreement with atheists to target churches and religious groups investigating their political activity. As you might guess, that has stirred a bit of controversy. Hmm, now describing what the IRS might investigate as political activity is a little vague because as Fox News never explained, churches and religious groups can engage in some political activity. It's just that federal law 26 USC section 501c3 says they can't participate in or intervene in any political campaign on behalf of or in opposition to any candidate for public office. And there's lots of material on the IRS website explaining the rules under the law in detail, including a video from a senior tax law specialist, Virginia Richardson, specifically on the topic of churches and religious groups and specifically addressing political activity in this clip. The point we want to make crystal clear is that intervention by a church or religious organization in a political campaign is absolutely prohibited. It's not allowed. Don't do it. If you do it, you risk losing your tax exempt status. And if that happens, you expose yourself to tax liability and contributions to your organization are no longer tax deductible. The prohibition on political activity includes participating in any campaign on behalf of or opposed to any candidate for elective public office. It includes contributions to political campaign funds or public statements of support for or opposed to a candidate on behalf of the church. Nonpartisan voter education, voter registration, or get out the vote drives are okay but they must be nonpartisan. So those are the general rules on political activity that churches have to follow that never made it into the Fox News story, just like the fact that there's this active campaign, the Pulpit Initiative, to get churches to disobey and challenge those rules. And in fact, when Fox News finally quoted the co-president of the Freedom From Religion Foundation explaining the rules his group wants the IRS to enforce, Fox News seemed to cut any description of the prohibited conduct 
be on the vague term political activity again, even starting a clip of the Freedom From Religion Foundation's Dan Barker in the middle of his sentence, seeming to cut out any specific description of how churches are violating the rules beyond calling it political activity, when Fox News anchor Martha McCallum turned the story over to Fox News anchor Shannon Bream here. Shannon Bream is live in Washington. So how did this so-called secret agreement come to be, Shannon? Well, Martha, the Freedom From Religion Foundation sued the IRS, saying it wasn't doing its job in making sure that churches that have tax-exempt status weren't engaging in political activity. I talked with the co-president of that group, Dan Barker. He says they've reached a deal with the IRS, under which he says he's been assured the IRS is going to do more in this arena. He told me that churches and pastors have been getting away with too much. If churches can get away with that, then they become a political action committee that is not accountable. People can start pouring money into churches for political reasons to mobilize the vote, and that's just not what the nonprofit IRS law was intended to do. Hmm. Now, it's unclear exactly what Fox News cut out of that clip of Dan Barker from the Freedom From Religion Foundation, but over on their website, there's really relevant information that never made it into the Fox News story, including the fact that they filed their lawsuit after the IRS admitted they had not investigated a single church for violating these rules since 2009 despite specific complaints from the Freedom From Religion Foundation and despite Eric Stanley's ongoing campaign to get conservative Christian churches to violate the law, but Shannon Bream never brought up any of those blatant violations of the rules for tax-exempt churches, instead raising the specter of IRS agents secretly spying on church services before giving one more opportunity to Alliance Defending Freedom Senior Counsel Eric Stanley to air his viewpoint free from journalistic cross-examination in this clip. So do we have any details about what the IRS is planning when it comes to how they would keep an eye on these churches? Would they go into the congregation and listen to what's being said? Yeah, that's the tricky part here because the details of this deal aren't available to the public, and that's why attorneys with the Alliance Defending Freedom have filed a Freedom of Information Act request. They say it's outrageous that the IRS could be ramping up some new enforcement plan specifically against churches, but that those churches can't get any information about what's going on. Here's the attorney, Eric Stanley. Every American ought to fear when the federal government sets up bureaucrats to censor what their pastor can and cannot say from the pulpit. Pastors and churches might disagree as to whether they talk about candidates or elections from the pulpit, but I think we all at least can agree that it's not the job of the IRS to tell them that they cannot. Let each church make that decision for themselves. <laughs> so Fox News actually aired that clip without ever telling their viewers about the law contradicting what conservative Christian lawyer Eric Stanley said there about it not being the place of the IRS to tell churches how their ministers can talk about candidates and elections from the pulpit. Despite the wealth of information on the IRS website explaining the law, even including a clip from that senior tax law specialist specifically addressing what ministers can do over here. What about ministers and other religious leaders? They are free to express themselves on political matters and public policy issues speaking as individuals. They must not make partisan comments in official organization publications or at official church functions. Hmm, so there's video information on the IRS website explaining why Eric Stanley's pulpit initiative, getting ministers to speak from the pulpit about candidates and elections, violates federal law, as well as a wealth of written information. But Fox News' excuse for not informing their viewers about any of it, I guess, came in this final exchange between the supposedly straight news anchors here. We reached out to the IRS and they simply told us they can't comment on pending litigation. Mm. Martha? Fascinating. Shannon, thank you. <laughs> fascinating. I agree, but I want to know what you think. Is it fascinating to watch Fox News spin IRS enforcement of laws against tax-exempt churches intervening in elections into a secret atheist attack on religion? And on the bigger topic, should tax-exempt churches be able to endorse political candidates and basically act like super PACs? I, YouTube, you decide.